I wanted to solve a problem that involves Gauss's law and involves electrical flux. This problem also involves electrical conductors. Uh, so that's a topic I didn't get to in Thursday's lecture class. Anyway, in this problem, we're asked to imagine, picture a single point charge is plus Q and it's situated or placed at the center of a, a spherical conducting neutral shell. And so I've, I've pictured that over here. Here's the positive charge plus Q. Here's empty space. Here's the inner wall of the spherical conducting shell. Here's the outer wall of the spherical conducting shell. There's conductor in between these walls. And then here's outside the shell, here's empty space again. And the question is, can we write down, can we figure out the electrical field in the three distinct regions in this problem. One region is inside the conducting shell. A second region is the conducting shell itself, the material of the conducting shell. And a third region is outside the, um, the conducting shell. So we're gonna find the, the electrical field in those regions. Now we're gonna do this with um, Gauss's law that the flux through a closed surface is in proportion to the charge inside the closed surface. We're gonna do it using the definition of electrical flux in terms of the electrical field, that the flux is the product of the perpendicular component of the field times the um, surface area of the particular surface. And we're gonna use it and we're going to solve it using a couple of rules about conductors in electrical fields. So let me write down those rules about conductors in electrical fields. So these rules apply to a situation that we call equilibrium in conductors that don't apply to a situation that we call non-equilibrium in conductors. Um, imagine you had a conductor and you switched on in the neighborhood an electrical field, or you had a conductor and you switched off in the neighborhood of an electrical field. There's a, there's a moment, there's an instant when you switch on the electrical field, or you switch off the electrical field, when if you could see inside the conductor, there's lots of activity. There's uh, electrons moving around inside the conductor. Then after that instant, after that moment, the electrons have rearranged themselves, redistributed themselves, and things are quiet again. So equilibrium in a conductor is when those electrons, those mobile electrons, are no longer moving around. Non-equilibrium is when those electrons, those mobile electrons are redistributing themselves. And so our rules I'm gonna write down are for conductors in equilibrium, uh, when those mobile electrons have come to, come to rest. First rule for an electrical conductor is that in equilibrium, the electrical field everywhere inside the conductor is zero. Nowhere inside the conductor that the electrical field is not zero.
The second rule for an electrical conductor is that any regions of excess charge, any regions that aren't neutral in the conductor are always on the surface of the conductor. They're never in the interior, the body of the conductor. And so these are the two rules that we need to add to Gauss's law, add to the definition of flux to solve this problem where we've got a conductor present. So let's go ahead and solve it. Let's start with region one. Uh, that's inside this shell here. And let's figure out the electrical field here. And the way I'm going to figure out the electrical field, because this is a problem involving a spherical geometry and a spherical shell, I'm going to think about a spherical surface that's inside that conducting shell. And I'm going to think about the electrical flux through that spherical surface. And in that way, I'm going to figure out the electrical field through that spherical surface. So here's the spherical surface that I'm going to think of. I, I sketched it in magenta here. And for that spherical surface as a closed surface, the flux through that closed surface, the electric flux through that closed surface is in proportion to the charge inside that closed surface, and that's Q. So that's our starting point. That's Gauss's law. That's a simple relation between the flux through a closed surface and the charge inside the closed surface for this particular closed surface. The flux is the perpendicular component of the electrical field times the area of the particular surface. So that product must be equal to 4 pi k constant times the charge that we placed at the center of the conducting shell. The perpendicular component of the electrical field is actually simply the electrical field because the field emerges radially outwards from the positive charge. So perpendicular component of the electrical field is just the electrical field. And the area of our surface is just four pi r squared. It's the area of a, of a sphere, surface area of a sphere. And so that must equal four pi k q. And at that point, we can rearrange this equation. I can cancel out the four pi's and write this as an equation for the electrical field inside the shell is going to be kq over r squared. And so with Gauss's law, we've, we've solved the electrical field inside the spherical shell. R here is the distance from the cent central charge is the radius of the spherical shell. So this equation tells us, informs us how the field falls off as you walk away from the positive charge to, towards the inner wall of the spherical shell. It, it falls off as one over r squared. So that is region one. So what about region two? This one's easy. So region two is inside the body, the material of the conductor. Inside the body of the material of conductor, our rule for conductors in equilibrium is that the, the electrical field inside the body of the conductor is zero. So E equals zero inside the body of conductor. We can just write that straight down. But actually this tells us 
something further that's very interesting about the conductor. Let's think about another surface, closed surface that's inside the body of the conductor. This one here. So the electrical field at the location of that surface is, is zero. Now Gauss's flux law tells us that the flux through that surface is determined by the charge contained inside that surface. So for that field to be zero, which implies the flux is zero, it must mean that the charge inside that closed surface is also zero. So how could it be that the charge inside that closed surface is zero? Well, the way that works is that when you place that charge plus Q at the center of the shell, a corresponding charge minus Q is generated or distributed over the inner surface of the conducting shell. And because the shell was originally neutral, it must leave behind a positive charge on the outer surface of the conducting shell. So as we said, our second rule about conductors was that um, there's no regions of excess charge or net charge in the body of the conductor, in the volume of the conductor, the interior of the conductor, but you can have regions of excess charge on the surface of the conductor. And what's happened here to make the electrical field zero inside the conductor, to make the flux, electrical flux through that surface zero, uh, a negative charge has appeared on the inner surface of the conductor. And a, um, therefore a positive charge must be, must be present on the outer surface of the conductor. And so not only when we consider region two, were we able to immediately say the electrical field is zero, but we were able to infer the charge distribution on this conducting spherical shell. Now it's overall electrically neutral. The total charge on that conducting shell is zero, but it has a negative interior and a um, uh, positive exterior. Okay, finally, we're gonna solve the electrical field in the third region. That's region number three. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, we're gonna solve the electrical field in this region by Gauss's flux law and the definition of flux by combining those two things. So Gauss's flux law, let me write that down again, is that the flux through a closed surface is in proportion, here's the proportionality constant to the charge inside the closed surface. The closed surface we're gonna think of in this case is one in region three, it's this one I've drawn here. Let's call it radius R again. So we just gotta go ahead and apply Gauss's flux law to this particular surface. Now again, Gauss's, the flux in Gauss's flux law is its definition is, it's the product of the perpendicular component electrical field times the area of the surface. So we can fill that in. That's straightforward. The perpendicular component of the electrical field is actually just the magnitude of the electrical field. So I can replace the perpendicular component with the electrical field itself, just like we did in region one. The area is again, the area of this surface, this spherical surface, it's four pi R squared. So I can fill that in. And then I can equate that with this constant times the charge that's contained inside the Gaussian surface. We've got a point charge that's plus Q. We've got a negative charge minus Q distributed over the inner surface of the conducting shell. And we've got a positive charge distributed over the outer surface of the conducting shell. 
And so that's Gauss's flux law incorporated in the definition of flux. Well, if we look at this equation, we can cancel some things out. So the four pi's cancel out. Uh, the plus and minus Q on the inner outer surfaces of the shell cancel out. And if we rearrange this equation for the electrical field that we're asked to figure out, we find that the electrical field outside the shell in region three is also given by this equation KQ over R squared. And so that's our result for the electrical field. Look, if you, you stand back and look at this problem, it was quite a challenging problem. It's quite a sophisticated problem. Uh, we're working with quite difficult electrical problems now. We got this point charge centered in this spherical shell. And we figured out the electrical field in the three regions and we figured an interesting thing. So in region number one, right, it still just looks like the field of a point charge. In region number two, now we're inside the conductor, it's zero. There is no field. You don't know that that point charge is there at the center of the shell. But once you get outside the shell in region number three, again, you see just the field of, a, a, of the point charge that's at the center of the um, conducting shell. In some sense, you don't know the conducting shell is there. Because if it was there or wasn't there, you'd see the same electrical field. We've also been able to infer a very interesting thing that when you put that positive charge at the center of the conducting shell, charges, mobile electrons in the shell rearranged, redistributed themselves. And the inner surface of the shell became negatively charged. The outer surface of the shell became positively charged. This is a very famous problem in electricity. It's a very famous problem, very famous example of Gauss's law, famous example of flux. Um, and it's a famous example of the properties of conductors uh, when they're immersed in electrical fields. So I would really um, think of this as an, an, an important problem that illustrates lots of things, flux, Gauss's law, conductors properties.